Are we on? Well, hello, everybody. Hello. Cheers and welcome to Sunday Supper. My name is Robbie G. I'm the professor of cheese, and I'm joined by... I'm Nate. <laughs> Come on. I'm Nate! A little more than that. This is Nate Gibson, our resident chef, and he's going to be teaching you all about pasta tonight and the endless possibilities. Yes. I mean, just We can quit right now. Uh -huh. We're done. Uh, well, but welcome everybody. Sign in to YouTube if you'd like to chat with us. Gina is behind the scenes and she'll be answering or she'll be asking the questions that she sees on the chat. Um, and we'll get to those as we go through. Is it a couple recipes tonight, Nate? Ooh, we got a couple recipes. So we're going to teach you guys how to make some dough and then we're going to make like three different little uh, dishes out of them. Cool. In the, in the meantime, you all with your kit got this little cheese plate and I'll tell you about what's on the cheese plate in the order that's on the, your lid. Uh, the first cheese, Pantaleo, is a harder cheese. There's two really hard cheeses and they look kind of similar, but the Pantaleo is a bit wider in color and it's in this little triangle shape. The second cheese is the Parmigiano Reggiano and it looks like this. So you may be used to seeing Parmesan shredded, but this is what it really looks like. It's going to be a little darker. It's, I guess it's more squared on the top, your, your pieces, than the Pantaleo, so that's how you can tell, tell the difference. The third cheese is in this little cup, and this is a Meredith marinated feta. It's uh, sheep in, in goat's milk from Australia. Super delicious. Oh, Nate, yeah. you're using all of these in your pastas as well, right? Oh yeah, we don't skip around here. <laughs> uh, everything that you get in the plate will somehow be using later on. And so you're gonna have them two ways. The, uh, there's other accoutrements on your plates. This is a sour cherry. It's it, spicy tart. Spicy tomato. tart <laughs> tomato. Yeah. <laughs> Close. Yeah. We have a sour cherry, but yeah. that's not it. Uh, the, uh, you've got almonds, Marcona almonds with a little truffle salt. So those are fun. There's figs. So those are black figs, dried. And then uh, kind of an olive mix, but looks like mostly Carmona olive. Correct? Correct, sir. Uh, and then what's, what herb is this? That's oregano. Oh, okay. So I didn't know what oregano looks like. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Nate. We've already started. <laughs> good news and bad news. What's the good news? Good news is that I'm, I'm running tomorrow morning. Yeah. So I'm carb loading tonight. Oh, perfect. You know what the bad news now? What's the bad news? I'm gluten intolerant. <laughs> <laughs> is it going to be bad? Am I going to get a tummy ache? Um, you know what? This is just really going to be fun for you. I'm actually not. I, no, you are. I've seen you have some And I'm not lactose intolerant <laughs> either. Um, let's get into it. All right. But if you guys have questions, yes. we will be fielding those as we go along and uh, let's do it. All right. So, how's everyone doing? In your kits today, we are kind of got a good array of vegetables in there. So, for instance, we have these sugar snap peas. We also have some summer squash, some little baby zucchinis. Um, this is your spring garlic, the bigger kind of, I guess you say tubular item. It also reeks of garlic. Totally and then tubular. these are in season right now, these are called ramps. So ramps are wild onions. Um, they're, they're probably one of the most prized things. They only happen once a year. And they actually grow, uh, you can't, in essence, you can't uh, farm them. Like they just grow wild. So these are usually found in like, I think they say like sandy, kind of wet places. So they're actually big in like Michigan. There's a ton of big ramp scene. Like anywhere that rains, they'll find ramps. Uh, you also have basil, some oregano, and then we have some mint, and some Calabrian chilies. We also have some lemons, more Meredith feta. You also have your ricotta, mm. or as they say, ripple. <laughs> That's what uh, they say on the Jersey Shore. Yes, that's what they do say on the Jersey Shore. <laughs> uh, some sun gold tomatoes, and I think that's it. Yeah. Hey, while you're while we're on that, yeah, I want to say that uh, mozzarella is pronounced mozzarella, <laughs> ricotta is pronounced ricotta, prosciutto is pronounced prosciutto. It's not ricotta, mozzarella, or prosciutto. Those are East Coast American. Um, um, how, how, what would we say? 
they uh, they've kind of devolved into those words. Yeah, slang. Uh, it's, it's slangish. Slangish. They're kind of made up words, but the 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 words are mozzarella ricotta and prosciutto. <laughs> Where I grew up, there was a lot. <laughs> a grew lot up on the that. East Coast, it was a lot of the. Hey, you have the fresh moose? Yeah. Like, and you're sitting there like, what are you talking about? Do you about? mean mozzarella? <laughs> I'm you, Irish. I yeah. don't know what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So, first things first, you guys got a container of double zero semolina. So, I'll put this up. It looks like this. It's the larger container. Um, it's the wider looking flour. So, this is going to be the basis of our pasta dough. So, double zero semolina. When it says double zero, it has to do with the grind on it. It's just extra fine semolina. Um, so that's like they're, that's how they're coated. Uh, so this is what I like to make if I'm making pasta dough by hand. If you ever see pasta like that comes in like like the penne or whatever, those are usually all made in an extruder. So an extruder is remember like the infomercial like. The boat, like the that one guy who like Mike, his name was Mike. Yes, he wears the sweaters. He did the, the smart yeah, mouth. Yeah, exactly. So you always had like these extruded pastas. <laughs> so for those, you always want to use semolina. So the dip, it, there's actually a whole other recipe that goes along with that. It's like semolina. It's water, um, baking soda. You're spo you're kind of messing with the chemical balance, the pH balance when you do that one, because you want them to press together and stay tight. Mm -hmm. So when you're making, when we're making these pastas, we're gonna use nothing, no, we're not gonna use any water, we're just gonna use just eggs, salt, and this flour. Um, I wrote down your recipes to, um, that one of the things you're gonna need today is eggs. We were just nervous that if we put it in the bag, it might, the eggs might go everywhere. So that's the only reason we omitted them. Um, so what you wanna do with your eggs, I know I did everything in grams. Um, it's just a more, little more precise way of doing it. So the good news is the flour is already measured out. I would do, if you don't have a scale, like a teaspoon of um, your salt, and you're gonna end up using a, uh, about eight egg yolks. So all you're gonna do is separate your egg yolks. So I did it already. So that's what this container is right here. They're so orange. So yeah, these are nice, really nice pasture-raised um, eggs. Mm. Well, it's like, that's a funny thing, like, when you ever see eggs at the grocery store, it has like, 19 different varieties yeah. of eggs. And this one's pasture-raised, this one's cage-free, this one's cage-free, pasteurized organic. This is the... free vegan. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, I always get, like, the pa I either go to the farmer's market and get mine from, like, a local farmer or get pasture-raised ones. It's just, the, it's, the whole thing is a big scam but it's fine um, so I have all my egg yolks in here I've got my flour and salt in the bowl and I have my one extra egg in here as well so when you separating your eggs good little trick keep them in two separate bowls so this is all my whites that are left over so you can either throw these away or make an egg white omelet the next day or if you're feeling frisky you can also make like meringue or anything like that. Don't throw it away because egg whites are expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Give them to Rob. Give them to yeah. Rob. Fine Good Rob. Protein. Good clean protein. Yeah. So we're going to take our eggs. We're going to add it. I know you see it on the, the shows all the time. We made a little well. And I'm going to add our eggs to the flour. All right. So now we do the fun task of mixing the flour and the eggs to each other. Now, if you have a food processor, totally use your food processor. Uh, if you don't, you can just do it like just the way we are, and just the way all the grandmas used to do it, just with our hands. So we're just gonna mix this up. And you can instantly just see the color is just like amazing purely for the fact that all we're using is eggs. So semolina is basically durum wheat. It is, yes. It's, it's uh, and that's the, like the difference between, you know how they, there's a, there's a myth that Marco Polo went to the Far East in his explorations and, and brought, and he saw their noodles and he, and yes. he brought back the idea for pasta. Yeah. It is a myth, as I said. Yeah. 
but they, they make, so pasta has been made around the, the world since 2000, more than 2000 years before, wait, before yeah. Marco Polo, who was around in the, the late uh, dark middle ages, which is like, you know, 12, 1300s. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but in the Far East, they make their noodles with rice flour, rice flour. or soy flour. Yep. That's one of the big differences. Yeah, I was doing some a little bit of research about like, all right, like, let's see when this pasta started. And like, there's another myth of this guy named, uh, I think it was like Horace L- Lagagna. Uh-huh. Lasa- lasagna? That's where lasagna came from. Oh, no, So he, apparently he used to fry dough and put like cheese on top of the dough. Uh-huh. And then it transformed into like a layering of cheese and meats when they did it. Yeah. And that's what turned into common day lasagna. Good one, Nate. And that like was, that. yeah, supposed to be like one of the first pasta dishes. Yeah. But there's like, there, yeah, there, again, there's no real, it's back to pizza. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it, pizza just started as flatbread and of course like, yeah. it, it would have came about like, because who, who wouldn't have figured out to put cheese and other yeah. veggies onto, onto bread? I mean, we've been doing it in various forms. And pasta is, there is a pasta from every country or every culture. Absolutely. I mean, Germany and Austria have Spetzel and Poland has uh, pierogies. Yeah. And noodles and all the, the Asian countries. Um, but yeah, it's. And oh, the other thing, the thing I looked up, do you know what pasta means? The word pasta? It means paste. Paste? And it has to do with the dough because yeah. the dough is like a paste. But that's what the, like the that. word means. Well, that's the best part uh, about pastas. You hear all the different sh- names of the different shapes. Uh-huh. So we got a few that are, we can all remember. We looked them up <laughs> earlier. <laughs> I, I brought my little food and it's like, well, I was going to bring my food Wikipedia <laughs> and I forgot it. And then my dog and my homework. <laughs> um, what's, uh, what's spaghetti name? Spaghetti is uh, little twine. Little twine? Little twine. Hey. And then if you do it on uh, a chitara, mm-hmm. It is means guitar strings. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I know bocatini is a little mouthful. Yeah, bucatini is a little mouth. Buc- bucatini. Uh, my favorite one is strozzapreti. Strozzapreti? Yeah, it means priest choker. What? Huh? So there's like a folk... <laughs> oh, like the white thing? Yeah, yeah. So it's like oh. after it's called, there's like a folklore story about it that... Uh, every, like every little town had a priest. Uh-huh. And so... And on Sundays, each family would take turns cooking for the priest. Oh. So I guess there was a greedy priest in one town that had that was like would eat everyone's <laughs> food. And um, greedy when, priest. Yeah, yeah, when he did that, every he would just like eat everyone out. Like so, it was it, like out of all their like out household food. So he's just like they're like, okay, well this this is not good. We don't have that much. So they used to make this one pasta called Stro- and they called it strozzapreti. And it said it, they said it was named after his collar, but they honestly named it so that way, like, they could fill him up on that and they wouldn't have to give him all their meats and cheeses and everything. Yeah, it wasn't because they wanted to choke him? No. Oh, okay. They're like, yeah, we'll choke him full of this. <laughs> yeah. I looked up uh, penne, means little quill or little pen. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, manicotti is sleeves. Sleeves, good. Orchid. What is it? Orchidee. Orchidee's Orchidee. ear. Little ear. Um, then we have... Oh, um... One of those little, the little corkscrews, what's is that? Um, Fusilli? Fusilli means yep. little corkscrew. And then we're gonna do, I know for sure today we're gonna do linguine, which is uh, little tongues. That's and uh, appetizing. Fettuccine, which was, uh, is it little, Fettuccine. little ribbons, little ribbons. Little ribbons. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I've just been needing this while we've been talking. <laughs> and if you can see this, I think Gina's gonna zoom in for you. We're just stretching this out to get the gluten going. And it's you, a really nice yellow color. Beautiful yellow color, and all that is just from the yolks. So oh, see how good. nice and smooth this is? This is, ooh, there you go. Hey, yo. Now it's got a mustache. Uh, this is perfect. So I don't really need to go any further with this. What I am gonna do is I'm gonna take the dough. We're gonna do a little swap out. So I made a dough earlier. And then you can just take this and put it either pla- wrap it in plaster wrap or just put it in a Ziploc bag like this. And then we're going to put this in the refrigerator to rest. 
Because you've been working this so much, you really want the dough to rest to relax. Because you stretched all the gluten out, it's like kind of nice and tight. But now you just want it to calm down, relax, get ready to roll out. You kind of speed it up too much, um, it doesn't come out that nice. What do you, how long are you going to give that? Just four hours? Uh, no, like an hour. Oh, oh. Yeah, like 30 minutes to an hour. So I made this one earlier. So we're just going to keep that. Actually, I'm going to move it over by Rob. But we're just, <clears throat> yeah, we're going to start talking about our filling real quick. So we have that basket. Get a little stuff off me. We have that basket ricotta. So this is made by Bellwether. If you guys have not had this ricotta, it's delicious. Big, big advocate of this one. <laughs> panini. Hey, I got a little panini. Panini. Here. <laughs> here comes a panini. All right. So all we're gonna do is take our ricotta, and then usually, like, if you're buying the store-bought stuff, it's usually really wet. So I highly recommend when you do it, just just strain it. And by strain, just put it in like a little colander, like maybe some cheesecloth underneath it, and it'll get some of that moisture out. Uh, let's just wash my hands real quick. So you get some of that moisture out, so that way you're not making your filling too wet. I'm showing in the basket, Nate, that it comes in. Yeah. So a lot of time, traditionally ricottas get made in a basket. They'll scoop in basically the the, the curd that forms again when they uh, they collect whey and and uh, they recook it to make ricotta and then they, they scoop it into the to baskets. And then they get, they're very wet as Nate said. Oh yeah. So this, as you can see, not that wet, nice and delicious. So what we're gonna add to this, we're gonna add some of our lemon zest. We're gonna add some of our Calabrian chili, salt, pepper, uh, a little bit of oregano, a little bit of basil. And we're actually gonna use some of these ramp top, tops as well. So I know like when you see ramps, you know, these are so much flavor in them. So you want to make sure for how expensive they are, they're like $30 a pound. So you want to make sure you're using every bit of them. So I'm just going to take a few of these ramp tops. Probably just need a few more. Can you use those, the stem part? We're going to use the stem um, in other dishes. Nice. So we're just going to use a few of these because we're going to use a few of these leaves in something else as well. So I took a few of those. I'm gonna take some of our spring garlic. I'm actually gonna go up closer to this part in the, uh, the stem. How, how similar is um, our ranch to say a fennel? Nah, not at all. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, fennel's gonna be like that licorice-y. Yeah. Ramps are wild onion, so we smell that. It just smells like a green, oh, yeah. like grassy onion. So I'm gonna take some of the spring garlic we're just gonna cut it nice and thin. Because this is gonna be in our filling, we're gonna make a couple stuffed pastas, and you, won't, you don't wanna have like huge chunks of any of this. So I just wanna make sure everything's nice and small. And I like, especially, this is the perfect time of season to do some of these pastas because, again, there's so much flavor and all these fresh, um, young, like, in essence, like spring onions and spring garlic. There's so much nice, grassy, light flavor to them, but you still get that big punch of onion or garlic. So I just tucked all these ramps in. I rolled them a little bit, and I'm just going to cut those just like that. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, guys. You know, I've just been doing this for a while, so I, have, I may have a leg up on you. But always tuck your fingers in. Go as fast as you feel comfortable. And then we're also going to grab some of our basil. These all would have been great pizza toppings. Some of them more pizza toppings. Yeah. Uh, all right, grab some of that. I grab some of our oregano. So oregano, picture it just like rosemary or anything along those lines. You're gonna take it, you're gonna go against, and just put it right down in there. And fresh oregano is gonna have a lot of flavor. So actually a little bit goes a long way with this. I love it. The smell 
it almost gets like a lemony smell when it's this fresh. So I'm just gonna wrap those up together, roll it a little bit. And what all the rolling is doing is keeping everything in place. This makes it easier for me to keep track of everything so it doesn't spill out and I don't cut my finger. Are you making a Julian? <laughs> I went to Julian Height. Um, a Julian, yes. Uh, but yeah, it's, yes, we are. So now I'm just going to cut those even smaller where we go into the near mint phase. Just because I don't want, again, big chunks of anything in this. So we've done this. I'm going to knife off real quick. I'm just going to toss this. Right into our room. Record. <laughs> yeah, so Bellwether, who's the, who makes that ricot, is uh, they're up in Northern California. They're in the North Bay, and they make. Uh, they're one of the few cheesemakers in California that uses sheep's milk. Yeah. And so they have a, a couple of uh, hard to find sheep's milk cheeses. Uh, Carmody is one. Actually, Carmody is made with cow's milk, but they have one called San Andreas, which is made with sheep's milk. Which is a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds delicious. Um, all right, and now we have these are not just any peppers. These are Calabrian chilies. All right. So these are Italian chilies. These are got a nice, solid kick to them. Um, they and this is all at your own discretion. If you don't like a lot of heat, add one. If you don't like heat at all, don't add any. If you like a lot of heat, you can add a few more. Can you eat one? Can you just eat one I, as is? It is simply there'll be real. You can certainly. Can it you will be re hot. Can you? <laughs> I can. Yeah. Can we see you do it? Um, you don't have to. <laughs> I mean, you talk. <laughs> a, <laughs> next time. You talk yeah. a big game, but. All right. <laughs> can you eat one, Rob? You are? No, and I'm no? not claiming to. <laughs> all right. So all I'm doing is taking the, the tops of these off. Throw those away. Uh, if you really are sensitive to spice, take the seeds out. We're all fine here. Where did you get the Calabrians? I got, where so I get every, for all these classes, I get all of our, uh, all the produce from these from specialty. So specialty produce, they're um, down in, like on the, in between Midtown and Old Town, kind of. By that old Mission Brewery. Yeah. And they are, they supply pretty much, I would say, 70% of the restaurants in San Diego with their produce. Mm. And so they have, a, like, I always go and recommend going to the section that they do all their farmer's market stuff. So they have a whole, one whole walk-in just dedicated to specialty and like locally farmed produce. That's actually where we got all the eggs, this is where we got uh, the flowers, this is where we got all the, every, all the produce you see in front of you. So we just added our Calabrian chilies we're gonna take some of our lemons and I'm just gonna add the zest. And don't throw away the lemon after you zest it because we're gonna use the juice of that later. So lemon zest is, when you're making anything like this, is the preferred method for the fact that you're not adding any more liquid to this. I don't wanna add any more liquid because I don't wanna make it any, any more loose. So add a little more. So probably do like one and a half lemons. I think I said one or two lemons in your recipe. I just noticed that this, everything you're making right now is so, is so representative of Southern Italy. Cause you have lemons, which are Sicily yeah. and Amalfi. And then you have the ricotta, which ricotta, which is, uh, <laughs> which is, which is um, Campania. Yep. And then you have the, uh, the Calabrian peppers, which is Calabria. Yeah. You know what, I'm just, did you think about that? I did not at all. <laughs> I just, job. you know what, sometimes just flavors make sense that they go together like that. No, it's uh, regional. No wonder they go so yeah. well together. Um, all right, so we have this. We have a little salt. I do a couple bits of cracked pepper. And then, let's take a spoon, and all we're gonna do is mix this together now. So you can always make this 
ahead of time and just put it in the fridge and wait till you're making pasta to, to break it out again. Um, so we're just gonna leave it like this. We'll put it, actually we'll have Rob try it real quick to make sure it's up to snuff. <laughs> Molto buono. Yeah. Oh, we've done, we've done it, it again. We've done, <laughs> done it again. All right, so I'm gonna put this in the fridge. Get chilled. It actually makes it, it's actually nicer that way because it, it stiffens it up a bit. So when we put it on there, it won't run everywhere. All right. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a little bit of pesto. So you have all these beautiful sugar snap peas. So I love sugar snap peas for the fact they do taste, they're like nature's candy. Mm. They're up there with beets for me. Um, so when you're cleaning these, you always want to go from the top right here and you peel down this little ribbon over here. It's just really tough to eat this. It's really strange you get cut in your teeth. And I do the same thing and you get a little one off the other end. So I'm going to do that. And on your recipe, I told you guys to blanch your snap peas. So if you guys are unfamiliar with what that term means, all you're going to do is put it in hot salted water just so they get, I just blanched these ones, just so they get a little brighter green, a touch soft, I don't want them mushy, I just want them just starting to get pliable. And then after it's done, instantly go shock them in ice water. What you're doing is you're partially cooking them, you're, I like to call it, you're setting the color. So no matter what, the, the, your, your pesto is gonna stay this color. Um, it's a little like good cheat. Um, and then after that, like when you go to cook, we're gonna cook some of these later, they cook up in no time. So that way I, all you have to do is throw them in at the end. So our pesto is not the traditional pesto in a sense, because we are gonna make, this is a snap pea pesto. So I have a couple of these snap peas. And all I'm gonna do is just cut them in a little bit smaller. And we're going to put these in our little uh, food processor. I, <laughs> I asked you earlier, I was like, hey, where's your robo queue? She was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah, that's, uh, that's all the restaurants speak. But, yeah, food processor. Traditionally, if you have a mortar, mortar and pestle, that is the way to go. So I'm going to throw quite a few of these in there. What, what was it? What did you say? A Robo Q? Like Robo Coo. Coo. Oh. Yeah, it's a. It's like, I think it's the brand name. Yeah. Uh, but it's like the standard restaurant, like. It's like an industrial. Food pro yeah, industrial food processor. Jeez. I know it's fancy. Fancy, fancy. fancy Do you have one at home, Nate? I don't have one at home. No, I have to use this one. <laughs> <laughs> I just have this thing right here. You have the mortar. Pestle? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's a good workout. It is. So. Right here, we're gonna add in, uh, sorry, we're gonna add our, some of our spring garlic. So I'm just gonna cut a little bit of this down. The more you cut it down before you go in, the less time you actually have to spend putting in the food processor. Kinda gives it a, like a head start on all being the same size. All right, now I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna grab some more of the ramp, uh, the ramp tops. This one's looking a little iffy, so I'm gonna throw some of those away. Let's ramp it up, Nate. <laughs> Adam. <laughs> oh yeah. So, <laughs> the ramp top's gonna go right in there. Might throw a few in there just for flavor. Perfect. And then we're gonna add in a little more lemon zest, because again, we want as much flavor as we can get. We want it nice and bright, sharp. I'm gonna do one more. So 
So my favorite line was working in restaurants. Actually, my favorite station to work was was the pasta station. In my eyes, it's like there's so much finesse that goes along in making proper pasta mm-hmm. that there was, and it was also the busiest. It's pretty much the busiest station in every restaurant because everyone orders pasta. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna blitz these real quick. Just want to get these ones started first because they're a little bit tougher. So I'm just gonna just kind of pulse these. All right, so that's all I'm gonna do. And you can see they're already starting to break down a bit. So from here, we're gonna add in some of our basil. And make sure I save a little bit for topping our pasta in a sec. So throw a little bit of that in there. And this is where I'm actually gonna add in some of that mint. So this is just regular mint. There's probably, there's like so many different kinds of mint. Chocolate mint, pineapple mint, lemon mint, spearmint. So we're just doing the standard mint. We're gonna add a little bit of that. That's just gonna, mint and peas go really well together. So it's gonna brighten that up a bit. And I'm actually, cause we're making this a little bit different. I'm gonna use some of this pantaleo in there. So the pantalone, because it's goat's milk, has a little bit more of that tang to it. So I'm just gonna grate a little bit of that in there. And honestly, with this, you can probably just break it up too. You're gonna break it up anyways. So we'll do that and we'll save a little bit of, the, of this pantaleo to put over the top of the pasta. And then I'm actually gonna put a touch of salt. So the salt, as much as it's gonna flavor everything, it's also and like, it's almost like an abrasive thing, so it's gonna make it actually smoother. If that makes any sense? Um, so, that, like, when people use a mortar pestle, it actually use salt in there to kind of smooth everything out. So, we're just gonna keep pulsing this. It's gonna keep breaking down. And this is where we're gonna start adding a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. So I use extra virgin in this case, instead of using canola, because I want to add some of that fruity like uh, olive flavor to it. And I'm also gonna take, because I'm feeling a little frisky, I got some leftover oil Ooh, yeah. from that Meredith. Some feta juice. A little feta juice. I'm gonna toss that right in there as well. And if you want, I think Robbie's feeling a little spicy. Yeah. Let's throw one of these Calabrian chilies in there. Oh, yeah. Jason Ross said he ate one in. Woo! <laughs> yeah? <laughs> Jason, you're my hero. <laughs> Much tougher than Nate. He did one. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you in a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Will you be... Uh, Will you be using any parm for this? Oh, we'll be using parm. Oh, all right, all right. All right. I'm getting ahead of myself. What about uh, pine nuts or pistachios, like a traditional yeah. pesto? So you can add pine nuts and, and everything. Um, more than welcome to. Sometimes I just leave it out because I'm going to cook this up a little bit. But yeah, you can definitely add like the traditional pine nuts or something like that. I think this is fun kind of not doing it sometimes. Especially with the peas in there, you get the texture through that. Uh, but yeah, I've made pistachio ones, and like for these, you could use pistachio, keep it green. But I'm just keeping this a little more chunky, not that super, super um, like oily yeah. kind of pesto. I like this a little bit thicker because we're gonna mix this in a little bit. So. Speaking of Italian regions, do you guys know what region pesto comes from? Uh, is it le, Libida? Liberta? Close. Le, Libido? Libida. Yeah. <laughs> Liguria. Chirita, come on. <laughs> Highs and Pepper Incorporated. <laughs> so, so measles. What's my How's that go? Yeah. <laughs> Something along those lines, yeah. I haven't seen that show in a long time. I don't think anyone. Anyway. <laughs> um, Liguria. 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 I think they 
That's the, where they, they claim yeah. Christopher Columbus too. Oh, uh, yeah? But he's claimed to, a lot of places claim Christopher Columbus, mm. including Spain. <laughs> Everyone, uh, yeah. That's cool, though. Where's that? Nigeria is on the west coast, kind of northern, north of, north of Tuscany, I guess probably uh, west of Emilia Romagna. Very cool. So it's on that west coast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. I'm just gonna. We're already right now. Is I'm gonna get the, some of these vegetables prepared because after we do that, we're gonna start working on rolling out our pasta. But as long as we have all this ready to go, we can just go right into making our pasta dishes. So these are baby zucchinis. Mm. I'm just gonna cut the tops off of them. And from here, you can kind of do whatever you'd like. With what we're gonna make, I'm probably just gonna do some like, come oblique rounds. It's just a fancy turn, you're cutting it at an angle. Um, so cut these in rounds. Oh, they're such cute little zucchinis. They, they're adorable, <laughs> is what they are. I also feel like a giant right now. <laughs> <laughs> No, these are normal, normal size. size. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind this machete I have right here. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And so I'm gonna cut, kind of cut those to mimic each other. Perfect. And put those next to each other. Spring garlic. We're gonna do nice thin rounds of that. And then what they call this in the biz is uh, you prepping your mise en place. So that is a fancy uh, French term that means everything in its place. I was wondering how you said that. Mise en place. So I'm just getting everything ready for our pasta dishes. So I'm going to cut the roots off of this. You could have saved this and it could have been like the, the head of like a boot, a doll or something. <laughs> I used to have a chef who used to keep them and fry them, hmm. and they said like they tasted good. I I was that was one two. You could do like a like a veg a vegetarian uh, calamari. <laughs> <laughs> All right, wow, wow, that was it. <laughs> Bit of a stretch. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna cut our ramps. So what was your like? I know you guys have been to. Italy, where's your guys' favorite region? My favorite is... What's your favorite region and pasta dish? Ooh, gosh. So I love the stuffed pastas. So I like the raviolis, um, anything stuffed with cheese, truffle, meat. Yeah. <laughs> so I, it's just like a, you bite into it and it's just like, uh, every time. It's not a surprise, but it's just like a, a treat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I love anything stuffed, and then I love... I do like kind of weird colored pastas, like when they do like the squid ink yep. pastas, and they're, and they're kind of charcoal color. Um, my favorite region... Now you're... This is like... And Gina, you have to answer this too. Okay. But they... Uh, have you been, Nate? I've never been, so I well, get to skip this question. Which no, but you will One of these days, you'll go one on one of our trips. Oh, yeah. I love... I think my favorite city is probably Florence um, because I love the history and there's so many great museums, but it's still modern and bustling. Like okay. it's still very much alive and there's a good mix of, you know, people that have been there for a while and yep. young professionals. And I like that because you don't see a lot of young professionals and it doesn't feel very alive in say Venice. <laughs> yeah. Um, I love though for a region, I love Piedmont in the north. All right. But it's more rural. It's more, and I just had some good experiences getting to know certain people there. So I've had a, a very good insider experience. Oh yeah, and plus great, great wine, great cheese, yeah. great everything. Like staying in a, I, we've been really lucky on some of our trips that I get to stay in like really nice boutique hotels, like yeah, overlooking the the vineyards of Barolo. So I mean, I've had a very Name well, drop. <laughs> 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 so it's been, uh, that's been a good experience. All right, Gina, what do you think? Gina, what's your favorite? I'm going to eat all day long cacio e pepe. It's Ooh, a Roman good style. Call. I just, yeah. the simple, simple pasta. I love our, um, 
Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna go Roman style with that pasta, and I'm gonna go Northern Italy for the food too, the Parma, the, mm -hmm. the Piedmont, uh, yeah, for sure. Heading towards the Austrian border. And uh, yeah, and mm -hmm. Milan, and like you have the Dolomites and the, the yeah. mountains up there too, so mm -hmm. it's just gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. My sister, she used to visit there a lot, and she actually, her honeymoon was there. She, her, she was like, Umbria? She's like... Wait, did your sister marry George Clooney? <laughs> did my sister marry... No, oh, I'm sorry. I that place. No, no. My sister would... Uh, sister is six feet tall, so she would <laughs> make George Clooney look like an infant. <laughs> <laughs> no, she married a very nice man named Brady. They used to... They used to go... They went there for... They went to Umbria. She's like, I, I would have just stayed there and never yeah. left. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and Umbria is... It's a region that... It, I'm impressed that she went there because a lot of people don't don't travel yeah. to Umbria, but they're known for their truffles. They have mm -hmm. they they have the biggest truffle farm in the country, and where white truffles come from Piedmont usually, yeah. Umbria is known for black truffles. They actually did a truffle hunt. Oh wow! And like whatever they found, they like they got a whatever course dinner uh, dinner with it. Yeah, wow! Just, it was unbelievable. That's All awesome. right, let's start rolling. Where's that rolling pin? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, what should I do? Should I we move? Move, we're just going to move this stuff real quick. Okay. We'll move this back here. I'll move my stuff over here. Alright. So. With our pasta. So, everyone got the dough. What we're going to do is we're going to make a few different styles of pasta. We're going to make kind of show you how to do spaghetti, we're going to show you how to do linguine, fettuccine, like pappardelle. Those are all this, honestly all it is is the size, the width of the noodle. So those are all the different names and shapes. It's all the same pasta dough, it's just different, different uh, sizes. So we're going to do that, we're also going to show you how to make some stuffed pastas. So we're definitely going to show, Rabbi, we're going to make some ravioli. Alright, my favorite. So I'm glad you said that it was your favorite. You're my hero. Alright. So the first thing I'm actually gonna do, uh, it may sound strange, but I'm gonna roll this a little bit in a in a circle or in a, in a round like a log. And it sounds a little weird, but if we're using one of these, like this is a KitchenAid that has a pasta sheeting attachment. Um, if you're not using that, you can just use a rolling pin. You just have to keep rolling up for a bit. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of break, the, move this a little bit. And that way it's a little bit uniform. I'll cut this, break this down to portions for myself. That way I'm not having to roll everything out at once. I'll take that from you. So I just have this up here to show you what we're using. So we'll keep these here. I'm gonna keep it under a towel just to stay a little bit hydrated. And I'm gonna take our dough. Again, I'm gonna roll it just like this. The other reason you roll it, yeah, so it stays nice and even, so that way you don't have one side that's like this thick when you end up rolling on, another side that's like that. It stays nice and equivalent. So do that, and I'm gonna take our rolling pin, and I'm gonna roll this down just like that. If we're not making our own pasta, yeah. Where's a good place to get fresh pasta? Fresh pasta, I would go to Little Italy and talk to the guys at Ascenti. Mm. They 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 make like a family run business and make pasta Luigi. there. Yeah. Talk to Luigi. Talk to Luigi. Tell him uh Robbie G sent it. What if I want dry pasta? Dry pasta? Like a Ralph's? Yeah, let's go to the supermarket. <laughs> Although the supermarkets are starting to sell fresh pasta. It's oh, yeah? really nice. Yeah. That's cool. All right, so we have rolled it up. This is thin enough to go through here. So when you ever have one of these, you always want to start it at the lowest setting. So on this one, it's a one. And then you're going to work your way up. Oh, sorry, it's the opposite. You're going to start high. Sorry. Don't mind us. Let's see if I can tighten it. 
actually, in this one you just start at one. Other ones you start like at a 10 and work your way down. So we're gonna turn this on. And I'm just gonna start feeding the pasta through. All right. And I'm gonna do, what I like to do is do every setting twice. Because the first time you're doing it, you're kind of pushing the pasta to be that size. And then the second time is you're making sure it stays at that size. Now I'm going to move this to a two. So you're making it thinner and thinner and thinner, correct? Exactly. And if you don't have this, you just we'll keep show Rob rolling and rolling, rolling. and rolling. <laughs> you get a workout. Yeah. And now you see one end a little smaller than the others, the other. But don't worry, uh, we'll show you how to fix this real quick. I'm just trying to get this in a smaller, smaller thickness. So we'll keep going down. And when, you tip, when it comes out, see I'm always using the back of my hand. I'm trying not to stretch this at all any more than it's already being stretched. I wish you had 3D. It's like, whoa! <laughs> yeah, you're gonna need Rob like, to get that one in. <laughs> yeah. Right. Are you adjusting it at all or you just keep putting it through the same? No, I, I keep adjusting it yeah. after two turns. That way, um, when I do that, it will kind of make sure it's at the proper, t like proper thickness. Kind of looks like a giant tongue. Tongues are yellow. <laughs> <laughs> so when I get to this point, what I'm going to do is turn this off real quick. I'm going to turn it down, I guess. I'm going to turn this back to one, and then I'm going to take my pasta. And I'm going to fold this in, fold this in, and fold this over, and press this down. Even it out a little bit, so make sure they stay together in there. And when you do that, I'm now going to kind of guarantee that I have even size pasta sheet. Wow. Interesting. I heard a bubble crack. Yeah. That was cool. <laughs> <laughs> Do that again. <laughs> Perfect. Two times again with each setting? Two, and I just, it's, I'm always just stuck, uh, stuck with them the two times on these. Because I just want it to be nice and even. I don't want it to be kind of messed up at all. This one's really nice. It's just well done, Kitchen. Fine, right? it's, it's no Robo Cube. But... <laughs> Alright. And then we're going to go probably one more setting down. So when we do our stuffed pasta, you actually want to roll it a little bit thinner because you got to think to yourself, I'm going to be rolling this over again. Like it possibly going to roll over itself. So that, that way it's going to double in size. If you're cutting noodles, you can go a little bit thicker. All right. That's so with that, that one's done. The sheet's done. So we're going to take this. I'm going to put a little bit, I gave you guys all a little container of semolina. And we'll put a little semolina down just so it doesn't stick. So when you're cutting, it will move and won't get stuck underneath. Mm -hmm. So the other trick I'll do is I'll put this back over here. And I put this here. 
Everyone got one of these sweet little things. <laughs> so I'm going to put this right here. And all I'm doing is cutting this edge so that way it's just even. And then I know like a bunch of you, if you're ever making soup, you can save these and just toss in your soup and you have noodles for your soup. So all I've done is do, done that. Now I'm going to cut. Well, actually, I'm going to leave it like this. Is it two layers or how many layers? So it's two layers. It's just one. Oh, up. gotcha. Now I'm saying? I feel you. Feel me? All right. So, Robbie. Yes. Will you actually grab that filling? Yes. From the fridge. Perfect. So put that right here. So we're gonna make, is there ever make square raviolis? Absolutely. All right, perfect. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna- oh, You can't no. make rectangle? No, I prefer square. <laughs> right. Well, a square is a rectangle, <laughs> or a rectangle is a square. Can you make parallelogram? <laughs> Can we get the rhombus out? <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I have a little bit of egg wash I'm going to take our filling and we're going to put dollops down right in the middle. I can do a little bit bigger. That's all going to be in one. Why are you upset about that? <laughs> I'm just, no, I'm happy. You misread my <laughs> That's one nacho. I'm so excited about this. <laughs> all right. So we'll do that. This is very exciting. If you want to get real weird, do you want to put eggs in these? Yeah. Yes. Egg yes. All right. <laughs> All right. I'll do a little bit more filling. And we're doing the egg yolk one. What we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to do a little dimple. The famous well. Yeah. Right in there. Do we have egg? Is oh, this? No, I'm going to oh. crack some fresh eggs. Like called Delmonico or something? Del yeah. This style with the egg? Uh, I have no idea. I just, yeah. I've just been doing it so many times I didn't know they actually uh -huh. style. There's a name. I thought mm -hmm. it was called Nate style. Yeah. It's the Nate. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to take our egg wash and I'm going to go in between and along the edge. Just and like the, the reason for that is? When we fold over our pasta, that way it's an insurance policy, it's gonna stick. Mm. So let's grab three of our eggs. All right. So I'm gonna take our eggs. So this step's optional, correct? This step is 100% <laughs> optional. Just like that. Oh, you grab that trash real quick. Oh, yeah. Perfect. So we'll take that yolk. Oh, it's so pretty, too. And it goes right in there. We'll do it one more time. They're so cute in their little, their little, 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 little bird's nest, really. <laughs> Rob, you're going to have all the egg whites in the world tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we made our nest. Put this out of the way. All right. So now we're going to fold over our pasta sheet, just like so. And when I fold this over, I'm going to push down as I'm folding. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm trying not to get any air bubbles. I want this as tight as I can as I'm putting this in there. What would air bubbles do? What, what they do is it, it makes like pockets and it actually will make it so it could, the filling could escape. Oh, uh, you can't have that. No, not a day like today. At a time like this. Yeah. All right. I like how you can see them through there. That's crazy. Uh, isn't that crazy? All right. And would it be? 
I'm actually, I use a little cheat system too. I, I think I put it on your recipe. I like to use a ruler. That way it looks a little bit more, a little cleaner. So I'll take this. I'm gonna add, go right down here. And we're gonna use the crinkle side. Just like that. And these, again, you can save. So I'm gonna do that side. I'm gonna do this side, just like that. We'll go down, down here. So let's eyeball on this one. And this is like, I'm still gonna make sure that there's no pockets. Cut right there, cut right there. And then we'll put them on our sheet right here and then put a little bit of that semolina down. Just like that, we have these big ass <laughs> raviolis. So these are we call raviolos, because you only gotta serve one of them. Gigantos. Yeah. This is the, the creme de la creme one right here. Is that your favorite one? That's a nice one. All right, so one down. Uh, next one we're gonna do is we're gonna do, I teach you how to do a little agnolotti real quick. Agnolotti. Yeah, so this is uh, one you guys see on the menu all the time. You're like, oh my God, I gotta order this. Agnolotti is a uh, great, I think it's like a little present or something like that. It ends up looking like a, almost like a, like a candy. I thought you were gonna say it was a, like angel, agnolati or maybe, maybe uh -huh. like angel hair, but I guess it's not. You've got angel hair. <laughs> Trust makes one with truffle stuffing and oh, yeah. truffle. Oh, oh, oh. So we're gonna go do the same process again. I still haven't been to Trust, I need to go. It's a good spot. Mm -hmm. They get cheese from us. Yeah. A lot of it. Yeah, they're, they've are they been uh, very lauded over the last couple of years. So it was, I felt kind of bad for them because they started winning all the awards and then and then COVID. Oh, uh, yeah. All right. So we're just gonna, again, just repeat. So I'm gonna go back to the lowest setting. I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think And if you ever see like, two like, you'll see pastas that have like herbs laminated into them. So what you would do with that is when we got to that lowest, or that, the thinnest part, like one we did last time, mm -hmm. that's when you put your herbs in and you put it through one more time to seal it together. It's real. Like you put them in the middle, and then you fold it over. Yeah. Then, yeah. What about like I was talking about the colored ones where they use squid ink or like maybe tomato so, or yeah for squid ink, you would subtract some of the egg because there, it it is a liquid, mm -hmm. and you would add that in when you were making the dough, and it would just instantly turn it black. Yeah, I know I've had some good, I have had a good squid ink pasta at Ben Cotto. Yeah. In Little Italy. It was the last one I had. Making it, Jason's Megan is getting an arm workout rolling the dough. <laughs> <laughs> Jason's making over. Megan roll the dough. Your next one while he's cooking. Sorry, he's drinking bowl. milk right now. <laughs> 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 so we're gonna roll this down. We're gonna do that same move we did last time. We go back to one. Fold over. Fold over. If you were rolling by hand, would you do the same thing? Get I as thin as you can, thing, then yeah. roll it like this? Yeah, mm -hmm. it actually, 
So one, it makes it even, and two, it adds a little more texture to the pasta. Uh, this is going to be a, a bit of a squeeze. If you have this situation, let's fold it over, you're fine. Uh, all right, now we're gonna do agnolobis with these ones. And then we'll do uh, a little bit of pappardelle. What does pappardelle mean? Or what is it? It means to, uh, to cut. Oh. Actually, look, I, I did like that one. <laughs> That's just not me. me no. <laughs> oh, Weisenheimer. Uh, no, it means to cut. There's another one that. Uh, well, there's a, oh, another one we didn't say was far, far folly. Far folly. Yeah. Which is uh, bow ties or butterflies, right? Correct. All right, we got one more. So what I want to do is I want to cut this so that way everything is even. Do that, do that. So you have like a little bit nicer even sheets. And then when you do the agnolotti, it's okay if it's afraid like that. And Rob, there is a Ziploc bag right next to you. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna teach you guys a little trick. You've probably seen this on the, the old Food Network. Uh, this is called, this is where you're, we're going to get a piping bag out of a Ziploc bag. If you don't have a piping bag at home, I grab the Ziploc bag, fold it over real quick, and we're just going to put our filling right inside. Oop. Uh -oh. It's all right. We got this, guys. Did you just ruin it? No. Nah. It's all good. <laughs> As soon as I do that, I'm going to squeeze, leave a little bit open, and I'll take this and I'm going to push everything down, and I'm, while I'm doing that, it's releasing the air, and then I'll close this back up, take one corner, let's say it's this one, that didn't work. That's <laughs> Mm -hmm. I'm gonna rip that off. So now we have a makeshift piping bag. You're like uh, MacGyver, mate. I try, you know? Or more like maybe MacGruber is more like it. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of my all time favorite Same here, yeah. <laughs> you would be. We'll yeah. tell you a lot about me and Nate. Yeah. <laughs> I remember the first time I, like Rob and I were hanging out, I looked at his DVD cabinet and he saw my and I'm like, yeah, that's a great movie. <laughs> I want to hear a funny story about that. I, I went, to, there were still blockbusters. Oh, it, yeah. The movies came out on Tuesdays and I went like three consecutive Tuesdays asking for McGrew. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, who is this yeah. guy? I had to go to different hey, blockbusters. Hey, you know, like alcoholics go to different oh, yeah. liquor stores. I had to go to different blockbusters. <laughs> <laughs> That's rock, guys. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna take the take our egg wash. I'm gonna put our egg wash down here. All right, and then we're gonna take this. 
We're gonna roll. And we're gonna roll over again. I'm gonna do another quick little leg wash. And I'm just gonna roll, not even a third time, just like, just a little bit more. And then from here, we'll take that nice crinkle cut. And I'm gonna go right down the side here. And then we're gonna do this. It's a very fancy thing. We're gonna take our fingers and we're whatever size we want. So I'm gonna go over here. Okay, that's weird. <laughs> Nate likes big pasta. Me? Yeah. Well, I'm a little guy, you know? <laughs> That's a little, there's a little one for you. <laughs> and then we'll just take this. All right. And you have the oh, Lego Lady. Cool. Awesome. And then this could be the world's little, little mini guy. Oh, me. Ah, little footballs. Beep, beep. They're so pretty too. Right? So we're gonna add this to our next to our humongos. Add some of these. And then with actually our extra dough here, I can start cutting our other pasta. Go like that. Yep. And from here, we'll take these guys. So the popper dough, again, is it popper doughs are thicker? <laughs> Sense the trend. Wait, did you say what popper dough means? To cut. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, I'm not paying attention. <laughs> so the I'm thinking about the food. He's doing that. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna take the ruler. I'm just gonna do that, and I'm gonna do these about an inch long. And you can always just slide this down. You could have worked at Downton Abbey. Your technique, precision. Uh, yeah. uh, it's called, yeah. You'd be sh like shocked at some of these places that you work and like, what well, you have to do this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's do it again. And a lot of like the old grandmas just had like like sticks <laughs> that would say how long everything was. All right. Do the same thing. Oh, don't worry, use this one anyways. So anytime you finish your pasta, always toss a little of that semolina. This will keep it from drying out. Or sorry, not drying out, but it's keeping it from sticking together. All right. And the last one. I think Rob cuts them. Rob, you wanna do this? Sure, what am I gonna do? Uh, we're gonna do, let's do, actually let's just do more, more popper dough. Okay. All right. No pressure now. Oh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I got my, my ruler trick here. Nailed it. Wait, that's not really even. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, so next time, <laughs> even yourself out. Oh, I know what I did wrong. Yep. Okay. Anyway, let me, uh, let me go back. <laughs> Just believe in yourself, Rob. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. See how this one looks. How's that? Oh, that's perfect. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Well, I'm just gonna get all these burners going real quick. We're gonna get ready for our uh, sauces. I'm gonna make this one a little thinner. Coach? Oh. I made it a little thinner. Is that I think that's fantastic. I'm gonna cut this one just right now. That's what I'm gonna do.
Hmm? It's not perfect like my others, but. But hey, you know what? Enough. They all taste it. They're all gonna taste good. Isn't least, there a term for those bits like rags or something? Oh, it's just all the. It's all the end shapes. Oh, I can't remember the name. Mm-hmm, it's something. Yeah, it's all the the rest like yeah. the rest of the bits. You know what they call that in cheese? Um, when they were making mozzarella, and they, they end up with all the leftover stringy bits, yeah. they call it stracciatella. It's my, that's one of my favorite things of all time. And stracciatella means torn shreds. And so they mix the stracciatella with cream, and that becomes the filling of traditional burrata. That is, so we had a, in Boston, we had a lady who made, made us homemade burrata, and she made stracciatella, and we yeah. used to put that on top of our pastas. Mm. I Ooh. always wonder if it, maybe someone knows or can find out, why do they have the, the gelato flavor stracciatella? I don't know. It's, it's like a very common, it's like almost like a standard almost vanilla yeah. like flavor. It's vanilla usually with like chocolate chips in it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Rob? Google anyone? Yeah. <laughs> Somebody? Everybody's busy rolling dough. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna start on some sauces real quick. So the first sauce I'm gonna start on is a, a little quick um, tomato sauce. So for the tomato sauce, let's use. Yeah, we'll use this guy. Is this? Is there anything in this water? So all we have, I just have a pot of water going. It's salted water. That's it. So I just got it going so that way we didn't have to wait for watch the water boil as it would. Uh, so for this quick, easy, fresh tomato sauce, I'm going to take a little bit of oil. This is our spring garlic. I'm going to take a little bit of our ramp bottoms. Ramp butts. Ramp butts. I saw a bag of Nate butts at the shop the other day. Nate butts? Oh, uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, that's a steal. Uh, I always, fun fact, guys, I take all the salami butts at home and I make tomato sauce with them. It's such a good idea. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah, I ran out of mine, Nate. I need some more. Can I order some more right now for me? I got, I got another batch coming, <laughs> coming soon. All right, I got a, lot, a little bit of this collaborating chili. Yeah. I'm going to add... Some of our tomatoes, just whole like this. Whoa. That's fun. Yeah, a little bit of salt. So instead of using canned tomatoes, these tomatoes are gonna be our tomato sauce. Oh, clever. Yeah. So this is gonna be nice and bright and fresh. Turn this guy down, uh, scotch. All right. And then, yeah, I'm going to have a little white wine on hand. So I'm going to hit this with a little white wine. Yes, please. And we're going to let that cook down. And these will start to blister and pop. And that white wine and the tomatoes will actually just create its own little sauce. All right. And this other pan, I'm just going to get trying to make like a little almost primavera-esque dish. So did you know mm. primavera is a, when I was looking at it, it was quoting it as a, actually an American Italian dish and not a true Italian dish. I just thought that was interesting. That's kind of like, there's a lot of things that are more American invention. Even yeah. they say that about Genoa salami. They're like, this doesn't come from Genoa. It's an American thing. Yeah. Um, they say that about burritos, too. You know that? Yeah. They say burritos. burritos are from Texas. <laughs> from Mexico. <laughs> well, like, it was in the other tradition was like the, the mission style from like, mm. from uh, Northern California. You're neck of the woods. So, you know, nice hot pan. All I'm doing is just going to saute these out. And then this is starting to blister. Mm. You can just smell a lot of love that's happening in that pan. Oh boy. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so we let that go. These guys, I'm just gonna leave like this, kind of turn it down a little bit. I wanna cook them out. I might actually add a touch of our pasta water to it. What will that make? It's just gonna lightly steam it and create a bit of a sauce. Okay. I don't wanna. Oh, be careful now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
I don't want to uh, char these vegetables too hard. And I'm going to throw some of these tomatoes in there too. Couple of those. All right, so I say first thing we should do is we're actually going to do the, we'll do the, uh, the big, we'll do the agnolotti first. So these are, when you ever do fresh pasta, these don't take long at all. These will take just like a minute or two. Um, and that's just because when you, when you do those other pastas at home, they're dried, so they take a long time. And this is called a spider, this tool right here. I'm using it because I don't want to pour out my pasta water, because we're going to do a couple different things. So if you use something along these lines, it, uh, it makes it so you can just keep reusing your pasta water. Could you, oh, sorry, did I forget that guy? Could you do a slotted spoon? You could do a slotted spoon as well. Um, Any one that you feel confident kind of using. So I'm just going to drop these right in. It's like what you use for a deep fryer, huh? Oh, yeah. So how long? We're just going to wait for them to come up. Oh, you just wait for them to rise? That's, that's all you We're going to wait for them to rise, and then we'll check oh. the size of them just to make sure that um, where they're pinched together is nice and tender. And I was going to give them a little push to make sure they don't stick to the bottom. All right. This man sauce is looking great. This is looking great. What I am going to do is I'm going to transfer these over here to this pan. I'm going to take, because we almost forgot about it, our pesto right in here. And it's just, just going to heat the pesto. That this is what's going to become our sauce. Mm -hmm. So the best thing to always add to is you always want to add pasta water. Because, all right, what do we put in here? We put something that's very starchy. So it actually helps thicken your pasta as your uh, pasta sauce when you're cooking it. Mm -hmm. All right. Looks like they're starting to rise. Oh yeah. Starting to rise. We'll give them a check real quick. And we're gonna check the sides. And these are nice and ready to go. Wow. That's how fast it takes. Wow. Probably less than a minute now. Yeah, and when you're cooking, you always want to add your pasta back to your sauce. Mm. Good tip. Always add it back to your sauce. And oh, so when you just think about it, you're adding, you always cook al dente because you want to finish your pasta in the sauce that you're cooking it. Mm. That way it gets all that flavor in there. So we're going to do a little shimmy shimmy shake shake. I'm going to add a quick, you should always add some kind of fat. There is a little bit of oil, but I'm just going to add a little small wedge of butter. Oh, <laughs> just a, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a little, little bit of love into there. All right. So I'm going to take this. Oh, I'm going to use that side. We're going to add this down. Add our agnos. Put this on real quick, just to melt the rest of the butter down. Warm up our pesto so that way we don't really kind of kill the temperature of our pasta. And then we'll just pour that pesto right oh Lord. over the top. Oh, <laughs> oh my lanta. All right, and then Robbie G. Yes. I got a little <laughs> project for you. Yes, sir. Here's that, here's that pantaleo. Do with it as you will. How much do you guys like? Lots. 
I'm the guy who goes to Olive Garden and doesn't say stop. <laughs> Parmigiano, Pecorino, right? Pantaleo, any of them will oh, do, yeah. right? Any of them will do. We just, I just like to use that because do that. we use the, uh, the Pantaleo inside of the, the pesto film. Ah, uh, yes. All right, perfect. So, next thing we're going to do are these giant raviolos. So, we'll just do one big guy real quick. Can I move this? Yeah. So especially with that egg yolk, these will not take long either. So we're going to use this sauce for it. So I'm going to take a little bit of our snap peas. I'm going to use a touch more if I have a little more of that pea oh, yeah. or the Meredith oil. That stuff is good for so many things. Some oh, for everything. Things. Even just dipping bread in it. Yeah. Take a little bit of our water. Yeah. The other thing that. is our water is also seasoned with salt. So you're not taking away or watering down anything. Is this egg going to be runny? We'll see. I'm excited. <laughs> That's Whatever it is, I'm That's the goal. So I have a little bit of butter there. A little bit of salt, a little fresh pepper. We're going to check our pasta. Probably one more minute. Meanwhile, I'm going to take this and I'm going to create our sauce. So when you move this, kind of as I'm just moving this back and forth, I'm trying to create this emulsified sauce. It's kind of when I'm taking it off the heat. How many times you get like, oh, this is, this is kind of disgusting broken butter sauce. <laughs> so take that. I got a ravioli. Go right in with it. Oh, yeah. Move that around. Give this a quick toss. Take this. Oh boy. Create a little primavera nest, if you will. All right. Robbie G, you want to crumble some yeah. of this guy on there? Yeah. And I got some more, some fresh basil for you to top on there as well. Boom. And mm -hmm. why not? These for funsies. What, what, what <laughs> got Where's my uh, grater? Oh. oh, there you go. A little Parmesan Reggiano for you. Let's make this pasta great again. <laughs> <laughs> for everybody. That's so awesome. <laughs> All right. Nailed it. All right. And last but not least, the tagliatelle. Mm. So. Take this guy, I'm gonna shake off some of this excess semolina. Shake it off, shake it off. Put them in, I'm just gonna move it around. I just don't want this to stick together. So, if you can see, our tomatoes, our sauce is actually, it broken down, started becoming a sauce. I'll add a little bit of our pasta water in there. Let me give this guy a little taste. Hey, you're, you're as good as an Italian grandma. <laughs> I work for a guy who is very strict about everything. <laughs> this is back in, in mass? Yeah. So this was a big, if you cook pasta, you cooked it right. Mm. Uh, so Jeff Fournay, I'll make, I'll make sure I did it right. Um, <laughs> so we have this. Our sauce looks incredible. It sure does. Our pasta is nearly done. And 
That's why I like to do cut everything ahead of time because you see how fast this all mm -hmm. cooks. Yeah. It's got a little kick to it. <laughs> so you guys be. Yeah, yeah, this right. because of the peppers. Because of those collateral. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, let's check. You can throw it against the wall. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I don't think Roger will let us do that. <laughs> Kind of ass now. <laughs> if it sticks to the ceiling. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to take, I'm going to let some of the water come in. All right. I'm going to add a little portion of butter. Okay. A little. Just, just a smidge, <laughs> a touch of salt. And then I'm going to actually turn the heat off because I don't need this to cook any longer. I just want the butter to melt in. I want it to coat my noodles. I'm going to create this nice little sauce. Have you cooked these recipes at restaurants that you've worked for? Or did you kind of come up with this a little bit on your own? Yeah. yeah. Just like, well, you, this is the greatest part. It's like I just found what was in season, yeah. what was around. Because obviously you can, you can change out all yeah. the ingredients, have fun with whatever seasonal. It's like with any, like, if you learn the basics of how to make something one way, you can then alter it to exactly the way you like it. Yep. All right, so I have that. I'm going to tear some of this basil in there. Take it easy, Gina. I know. I'm drooling. Sorry. The little, little steam on the camera is actually not coming from here. <laughs> All right. And then we'll put this nicely. Pasta, always pasta first. And then you want to finish with the rest of the sauce on top. Just like that. And you see how it's like, I don't have a ton of sauce. It's just coating. Mm -hmm. You're just trying to coat the pasta. I like one of my biggest pet peeves ever is when you go to a restaurant and you just see all of these dishes where like it's just swimming in sauce. Mm -hmm. No, it should be like a happy marriage of the two. Robbie, hit that parm. Parm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go a little higher. Like up here? Let me take you higher. <laughs> There we go, my man. So it's raining. Perfect. Oh, yeah. All right. And there's only one thing left, left to do. Let me put that one right here. Oh, do you go after the ravioli. Go after it? What do you mean? Like Everyone this? wants to see that yolk. Oh. Ravi, you do the trick. Okay. Oh, oh yeah, there it is. You see it? Yeah. I gotta get some yes. more pasta. In oh bite. lord. <laughs> the yolk is perfect, Nate. Amazing. <laughs> That's a crunch. Oh, I hear a crunch, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Is that so good? I got the bite had everything in it. Yeah. The, the pea, the crunch of the pea, I don't know if I got a... I mean, I'm get that now. Oh, but the yolk. A little yolk. Oh my gosh. That is unreal. Oh, oh boy. Oh, 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 oh. Mm. Just in case you... Oh, and then we've got the baguette to dip into it. Oh, yeah. Into the yolk. Just right into the... Oh. Into the thick of it. Stop. That is so Num beautiful. Num nums. <laughs> <laughs> No, you you bowed down yourself. Tickle me. <laughs> I don't tickle you because I wrote a joke for tonight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Would you like to hear it? Oh, I didn't know if it was that first one that really landed. <laughs> which, which, which is the first one that I did? Oh, the uh, the run one. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, this my joke is um, what's it called when the CIA assigns Tom Cruise to eat all of the spaghetti in Italy? Come on, you can, guess, you can guess the punchline. Mission impossible? You got it, oh, sir. 
<laughs> I'm the smartest boy in all the camp. I knew you'd figure it out. <laughs> no, this is so amazing. I, I don't want to double dip because I want you guys to get a chance to, to uh, enjoy this too. But absolutely. That was so f incredible. Oh my gosh. All right. Everybody's loving it. Dough's good. I think you guys. Yeah, and we've got all this. Stuff we got all the extra. Yeah. Um, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. Big thanks to Nate Gibson, our chef, for for doing what he does. And uh, I mean, there's just endless possibilities. We can do this, right. this class every night. Put this way, right? <laughs> Gina. There's other stuff Gina wants to make with pasta too. So I, I consider this the 101 class. So the next one, we're going to start messing around with a few different, like, maybe we'll make some cavatelli, we'll make some tortellonis, and do all that as well. Endless. We'll get more, more advanced. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank Th you, guys. Thanks, yeah. everybody. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. We'll see you soon. I'm not, what's coming up, Gina? Uh, Wine Wednesday. The is Italian. Yeah. Monte Pulciano. Monte Pulciano on the 21st is the next Wine Wednesday. Be there, be square. Just check out our website and you'll see everything that's coming up. We'll see you guys again soon. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank Ciao. Fishing <laughs> <Lynch. laughs>